Well, good morning. morning. Was the snow crunchy? I am thankful that uh, uh, we did not get much snow, maybe an inch. So welcome to you. Those of us, those of you who are joining us online, welcome. Uh, My guess is uh, we don't have people in the fellowship hall or the parking lot today. So that's probably good. Um, I remind, first first of all, um, happy Valentine's Day. And remember that Valentine actually was a Saint Valentine early in church history. Someone who loved the Lord enough to give his life for him. Jacob. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for braving the great outdoors and coming in maybe in search of treasure like the pioneers of old. We think that you'll find treasure here this morning. Before you ask, the answer is unfortunately no. You are not allowed to take this beautiful quilt down in case you get cold, even though there's a wonderful looking sun on there. I already asked and they said no. So. Um, A couple of announcements for us uh, this week, the first of which, uh, it is Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. I do have emergency candy in my office for any husband who is going through dread because maybe it slipped their mind. Um, But as such, uh, we usually have an event called a sweetheart dinner around this time, and it's a big youth event. Uh, We're going to be postponing that um, back until the summer, hopefully when it's not negative 10 degrees outside. Um, And so we think that we can be able to do this, maybe an outside event, maybe like a picnic or something like that. So we're not canceling that. It's something to look forward to, but we'll be doing that sometime in the summer. Also, uh, we are not going to be able to do Sunday school for the students between services. Um, Some of our teachers uh, became quarantined, and those that the quarantine didn't get the weather got the rest of them. So um, we're going to have to postpone that until next week. We've been able to do that very faithfully, which I'm very thankful for. And so next week, uh, what typically happens is between services, the younger students go into the classroom in the fellowship hall with our teacher, and then the teens, the older students, go with me in the office. And we usually get about an hour uh, to get into the Word, talk about Scripture, have some check-in time. Um, So that's going to be next week as well. Also, um, as we enter into the season of Lent, uh, our youth gatherings, our youth groups are going to start at 6.30. So we'll meet in uh, in the fellowship hall or in my office at 6.30 for the youth, and then we'll transition into the Lent service from there. Obviously, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. And that's what we have for the week. Thanks. How do you get all that on that little piece of paper? (laughs) I I add the most of it. A couple updates for you. Uh, we have been praying for Mary Campbell uh, for her back and leg, and she's been in a lot of pain. Spoke with Mary yesterday. I could tell in her voice she would feeling much, much better, and uh, that's exactly what she said, so we praise God for that. <clears throat> Last week I mentioned to you Eric McSwan, who had been injured in an uh, aircraft accident working on the aircraft. Um, I called him on Tuesday uh, reached his wife, and uh, she says, well, would you like to talk to him? Uh, he's home. Uh, accident happened a week ago Friday. He was home by, I believe it was Monday, doing very well. The uh, doctor that was attending him uh, said, I can't believe you didn't need surgery. So uh, truly a miracle, uh, perhaps uh, sometime down the road, I'll tell you the whole story. Last week, um, thank you for your participation in our Super Bowl. You can see on your announcements, and I'll repeat them for those of you who don't, who are at home. Um, last week, uh, 171 pounds of food was given in the name of the Chiefs, 133 in the name of the Buccaneers, so I guess we didn't predict the game. Uh, there was also almost $500. Uh, given toward the food pantry, so thank you so much for that. I also want you to know that I um, heard that the brewery just a mile south of us uh, had also a collection, a Super Bowl collection. They brought the food here. Guess how many pounds? Hundred? A thousand. So, uh, so what a great thing. I stopped in Tuesday, uh, Friday to thank them. This week, Ash uh, uh, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. Uh, Services will be at 7. We are not expecting snow, and I do believe it will be warmer. 
Um, and then the Wednesdays following that, we will gather with the peaceful music of the Holden Evening Prayer Service, and then we will be focusing on the theme, A Time of Healing, particularly with uh, this whole year, with COVID and all the crazy stuff, um, we will focus on healing, looking at Jesus uh, reaching out with countless people and uh, how did he bring wholeness and um, forgiveness and healing to their lives. I think that will do it. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Ah. The prayer of the day is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty God, on the mountain you showed your glory in the transfiguration of your Son. Give us the vision to see beyond the turmoil of our world and to behold the King in all his glory. 
Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, thank you to all the students who are joining here in the uh, sanctuary. Those who are joining online as well, you are welcome. Well, last week, I told a story about how I had to have my temperature taken uh, about 12 different times throughout the week. I went to a restaurant, I went to a grocery store, I went here and there, and one of the things that uh, I had to get my temperature taken for was, if you remember, I went a certain place to pick these up. Anyone have any idea what's in this box? Kind of like a little treasure, yep. These are glasses. Brand new, first time taking them out. I'm not gonna put them on just yet, but these are my new glasses. Now, why do you think I would get glasses? Specifically, prescription glasses. Why do you think I would get those? Yep, so I can see, yep. And now, it might be because um, I look funny without them. I think I look funnier when I don't wear them, though, because I have to look, you're all a very lovely shade of blurry right now. So, I wear glasses so that I can see things how they really are. In fact, when I first got glasses, I was in my mid-20s, and I had a passenger in the car with me, and I put them on, and I was driving, and I said, you know, wow, that's, so that's what a stop sign really looked like, right? So they, their eyes got big, they were a little worried, but it was fine. In our gospel passage today, we get an idea of just how special Jesus really is. We call this the transfiguration. That's a really big, fancy word that means change. Jesus was changed before his disciples. His clothes were as white as the snow outside. It says in our, our scripture passage that his face actually started shining. And that was a way of God showing people that Jesus was very special, so special that he would go on to say that we should listen to what Jesus has to say. So for us here this morning, it's important for us to know that Jesus is very special, that Jesus loves us very much, and that Jesus listens to us as we pray. Let's go ahead and do that now. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we thank you for nice, warm church. We thank you for our parents. We thank you for our grandparents. We thank you for all the things that you've done for us. We pray that you would help us to do nice things for other people too and realize just how special you are. And all God's children said, Amen. Our first reading this morning is from 2 Kings, 2nd chapter. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 
Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. As they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see them, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. We find our second reading in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here ends our readings. Hear the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had been risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Amazing things happened on that mountain. Jesus transfigured. His clothes become dazzling white. His face, you can only imagine, shining like the sun. And he wasn't alone. Who were with him? Elijah and Moses, the two most powerful characters of the whole Old Testament. And they're talking with Jesus. And you have to say, who is this Jesus? that he becomes transfigured, and then these people from 
the Old Testament come to speak with him. The disciples overwhelmed. Peter begins to babble. Uh, let's do something. A cloud overshadows them. It's the cloud similar perhaps to the one that overshadowed the Mount Sinai when God gave his people the covenant, when he adopted them, when he married them, when he said, you are now my people, I have just saved you from Egypt and the bondage, and so now this is the way I want you to live. The cloud overshadows them. And you think, who is this Jesus that all this is happening? And then the voice, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Don't just listen to everybody else. Don't just do your own thing. Don't just do all the talking. No, listen to him. As disciples of Jesus, as his followers, we're really given one instruction, one commandment. Listen to him. How do we listen? Uh, you know three ways, right? The first one is we can listen in worship. We also can listen as we pray. And we can listen as we read the scriptures. Those are excellent ways to be listening to him. Last week we heard a little bit more about prayer and how Jesus woke up early one morning. In fact, my guess is he did it every morning. He woke up before everything else was getting started, and he himself went to a deserted place, a lonely place, a quiet place, and there he prayed. Where did he go? A lonely place. And then when did he go to pray? In the morning before everything else had started, before his own schedule began. The morning when it's fresh, the press of the day hasn't come upon us, when we set it apart, the best part of the day, that we might connect with him. Pray. It's easy to think that prayer is mostly talking. We pour out our heart to him. We lift up those who are in need. We thank him for all the gifts that he shares with us. Much of the time, our prayers can resemble a list of what we want, almost like a list that we would give Santa Claus. Prayer is definitely talking, but it's also listening. And in the Transfiguration, we hear that this is my son, Listen to him. Imagine in your relationships, if you did all the talking. Oh, maybe you do. <laughs> but what would happen in your marriage? What would happen in your family between uh, student and uh, parent? What would happen in your friendships if you simply did all the talking? Remember that we are given one mouth, two ears, reminding us that listening is critical. If we don't listen to the other, we can't possibly know where they're at. Relationships are both listening and speaking, and so is prayer. In the Mount of Transfiguration, we hear, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. But how might he be speaking? How might the Lord be addressing to us, wanting to get through to us? I'm going to mention three stories. They are from people that you already know. One is from me. One is from Lisa, our, our, our uh, office, what do we call you now? Office manager. And uh, also from um, Scott Buttermore. So one way that God speaks is by planting thoughts in our head. A week ago last night, I woke up at 3.30 and didn't get back to sleep till 5.30. How many hours is that? Gosh, you guys are good. 
So two hours, I'm lying in bed, not sleeping. And so I simply said, well, all right, Lord, lay it on. I'm here. I'm available. What is it you got for me? Did he, um, did he address me with a voice? No. He never does. I ask for it. Just say, just tell me plainly. What do you want your people to hear? What choice should we make? Write it in the sky. He never does for me. Others, he does. So as I lay there, actually I was really quite peaceful and it was very enjoyable spending a little time with the Lord. And in that time, he brought to my mind the prayer of St. Francis. And so I began to pray it. It's one of the reasons I have given you that little prayer card. So that prayers that are worth putting in your head, you might actually memorize. And so that when you're in a place, whether it's in the middle of the night or somewhere waiting, you have almost a, a library of prayers or readings that you can access at any time and any place without even opening your eyes. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. And then it goes on. And as I prayed the prayer, as I tried to remember each word and the order, and sometimes I don't get that right, but as I was praying that, I realized, wow, this is really great. And so you are going to hear about that in two weeks on Sunday morning, as it fits into our text. One of the ways God speaks is quiet, subtle, almost imperceptible, by putting thoughts into our mind that then we can respond to or not. But for us to notice, we need to be attentive. We need to be listening. We need to begin to sense, how does he do that? Sometimes it's simply a thought. Or sometimes it's an actual word. Lisa shares her story in her own words. She says, I was on my way up to Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp for a women's retreat. I had much on my mind. I was really struggling with what God had planned for my future. So I chatted with him all the way up there in the car, sometimes talking, sometimes crying, sometimes shouting. I know you find that amazing with Lisa, but she did. She says, I was meeting with several friends up there, so I started the weekend with a full mind and heart. It was just one of those times I was really struggling. They offered a faith yoga class. I was hesitant because I'd never done that before. I wasn't sure what I was getting into, but it turned out okay. The instructor, the instructor read from the Bible, prayed, and played Christian music as we did the positions. I remember it so vividly. I was laying on my back, misty hop beside me. I was looking up into that beautiful blue sky. And then it happened. I heard it so clearly. The words, I got you, Lita. I got you, Lisa. I sat up so quickly, looked around but everyone else was just doing their thing. They hadn't said it. They hadn't even heard it. I laid back and thought, okay, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. Kind of ignoring the whole thing as much as I could. Then the last song came on. We were supposed to sit there and listen and relax and simply kind of let go. I was doing just that as the song ended and the last words of the song were, follow me. Follow me. That really struck me. So later when I got home, I asked our son Cam, who works at the camp, if he could get me that song list. Because I really wanted to find the song that ended with the words, follow me. I even asked the instructor which song it was, and she couldn't think of what it could be. So I got the list, and I listened to every song, over and over, looking for it. And let me tell you, she says, 
It wasn't there. I realized that it was God speaking to me. I got you, Lisa. Follow me. And it was then I lost it. I really lost it. I called Cam back, yelling, and said to Cam, it's not there. The words weren't in the song. It was God telling me to follow me, follow him. So Lisa says, since that day forward, I've been really trying to listen. I keep asking the Lord, where is it that you want me to follow? Sometimes God speaks in very obvious ways, in a way that no one else can hear. Now, Lisa, do you hear God's voice all the time? I haven't heard it since. Haven't heard it since. Perhaps once or twice. But she listened, and now she's listening even more attentively. Ask her sometime if she had her quiet time this morning. You know what she'll say? Always. 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 It's how we begin to listen deeply to the Lord. The Lord can speak in very subtle ways, like planting an idea. He can simply come out and say, follow me. Or maybe it's more of a nudge. This one is from Scott Buttermore. He says, several years ago, Cody and I were on our way home at night. We saw an SUV that had crashed head on into a tree. He says, I never stopped in this situation before because you never know people's intentions. But this time, something told me to stop. I rolled down the window and a woman approached me. I asked if she were okay. She says, yes, things happen and everything will be fine tomorrow. It seemed like a strange response, but I took her word for it and I took my son Cody home. When I got home, I had the feeling that I needed to go back. So I did. When I got there, I rolled down my window and heard the woman crying. Clearly she was distraught. She was on her cell phone, but I asked her if there was something I could do. She handed me her cell phone and said, my husband wants to talk to you. I'm thinking, what did I just get myself into? He asked me if his wife was okay. Had she tried to hurt herself? It was dark outside. She had long sleeves, a uh, sweatshirt on. She was walking away from me at the time, and so I told him, I can't see her wrists. She seemed very distraught. I gave him our location. He called 911. Eventually, the sheriff arrived, as well as the ambulance, and the woman was taken to the hospital. I asked the sheriff, did the woman try to hurt herself? The sheriff said, yes. The next morning, I looked at my truck, <clears throat> and I saw blood on the side, on the door, where she had leaned against it to speak to me. Scott says, I believe there was something else going on that night that put Cody and I on the same path as that woman. I never found out what happened to her, never found out her name. I hope she's okay. I think about that night quite a bit. And I realize that sometimes we just stumble into a situation where we're tapped on the shoulder to do something good. That's what I think happened to me. Someone, God, tapped me on the shoulder and said, I need your help. Scott may well have saved someone's life that night because he listened. Listen to him. For Scott, it was a nudge, a tap on the shoulder, a sense. I've got to do something. I've got to go back. And he did.
for Lisa, it was a voice that no one else heard. And now she is listening more carefully in ordinary ways. For me, it's almost always very subtle. Just a thought it can be a Bible verse, a part of a song, a prayer. Someone's name comes to mind and I think, oh, I probably should call them. All these ways that God speaks to us, gets our attention. It isn't our job to determine how God speaks. Our job is to listen. On the mountain with Jesus' transfiguration, the message is clear. Listen to him. Amen. Today we have the privilege of hearing um, who is joining our congregation and receiving them uh, into our midst. So as I read out these names, uh, I invite the, uh, Liz and Anna and Toby to come forward. Our other folks are coming to the second service. Cliff and Chris Collier, Jerry and Judith Jurgensen, Linda Johnson, Walter Pryor, Liz, Anna, and Toby, and Carolyn Peters. Congregation, you'll be seated. Well, hello, you three. Great to see you guys. Great to see you. I'm thinking that our face masks are very nice because they're all different. See? See? Um, so, traditions drive, where is that? Um, in Wolf Ranch. Wolf Ranch. South of you guys. Cordera. Uh, and um, these guys are just to your east. Uh, they're off of Silver Pond and Black Forest. 
basically, and uh, all these other people live someplace else. <laughs> um, let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who you have made your own by water and word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, nourished them in the community of faith, uphold them in the gifts and promises of baptism, unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I ask us all, do you profess, let us profess your, excuse me, let, let me start that again. I ask you all to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce. Do you renounce all the ways of sin that draw you from God? Same response. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. Ha, get here. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He was conceived as uh, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Ah. 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 So, you have made public profession of your faith. I ask, do you intend to continue in this covenant, this relationship that God began with you all the way in the beginning with baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word, share his holy supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through what you do and say, to strive for, to serve all people following Jesus' example and to strive for justice and peace in all the world. And everybody says, I do. And people of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? You may, you may say, I do. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, you cleanse us from sin and raise us up to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. Who's our sponsor here? Oh, Jack's the sponsor. Um, and we always like to give you a, um, uh, what do you call that thing? An uh, olive wood uh, pin. And uh, so here they are. Ah, look at these little suckers. Isn't that pretty? That's all the way from Bethlehem, and it's made of olive wood. So, um, uh, we do not have a chance to go into the fellowship hall today, but later, as we are done with our worship, please uh, greet uh, Liz and Anna and Toby. What are their three names? Liz, Anna, Toby. Huh? Welcome. Welcome. You're welcome. Let us pray. Lord, on the Mount of Transfiguration, you said, listen to him. There's no better thing we can do. For if we don't listen, 
we're not sure what direction to go. If we don't listen to him, then our life is simply everyone else's words. If we don't listen to him, finally, we don't know him. And we simply more and more would be in the dark. Lord, tune not only our ears, but our hearts and our eyes, all the different ways that we can attend to you and to your word. Listen to him, you say. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, there's so many ways for us to listen. You shower us with words, with messages, with direction, with care, with strength, love. You seek to fill our very beings with yourself. And yet often we're just too busy to listen. We wander off doing something else, thinking something else, reading something else. Many of which are very good, helpful things. But help us to listen to you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our world cold today. We think particularly of those who must travel, those who must work outside, those who have no shelter and must seek it in such difficult situations. Watch over them all with your compassion. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our missionary, Didi Panzo, his wife, Serafina. Continue to strengthen them. Help them to be listening to you, that you might guide them to those who need them the most, who need you the most. Thank you for giving them a purpose and calling them to the Congo of Africa. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are deployed, for Carson, Kyle, Matt, Sean. We pray for their families, that you would sustain them all as they are so far from each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift up to you Eric. Mary, Duane and Karen, Luke, Jan, Josh, Pam. Lord, you know their needs. You know ours. We ask that you would rest your hand of healing upon them and us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we did not deserve to come to your table. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved you with our whole heart. In spite of the fact that often we find ourselves far from you, you invite us to come. You invite us to your table, to your banquet, so that you might fill us with your very self. Lord, say the word and we shall be healed. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So the instructions. When we come to uh, our Lord's Supper, when you come forward, please remember to keep your mask on. Open those hands real wide. Keep them open as you receive the bread. An assisting minister will place a glass filled in front of you, and then they'll step back. That's when you take your mask off, eat, and drink. When you're done, place your empty glass in one of the baskets and return to your place. The offering prayer is in front of you. I invite you to join me. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves 
our time and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. And so with all the choirs of angels, with a church on earth, the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy, eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, remembering me. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you've refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord.